Tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane, or eardrum, is a thin, semi-transparent membrane which separates the external from the middle ear. It is trilaminar, oval, and is 0.1 millimeters thick. It is about 8 to 10 millimeters in diameter. It is positioned obliquely at an acute angle of around 55 degrees. The membrane forms a fibrocartilaginous ring that is attached to the tympanic plate. Subdivisions The tympanic membrane is divided into two parts, pars tensa and pars flaccida. Pars tensa It forms most of the tympanic membrane. It is thickened in its periphery to form a fibrocartilaginous rim called the annulus tympanicus. The fibrocartilaginous rim presents a notch above. From the margins of the notch, the anterior and posterior malleolar folds extend to gain attachment to the lateral process of the malleus. The handle of the malleus is firmly attached to the inner surface of the pars tensa. Pars flaccida. This is also known as shrapnel's membrane. It is a small triangular region above the lateral process of the malleus between the anterior and posterior malleolar folds. This part is thin, lacks, and appears pink in color. Surfaces. The tympanic membrane presents with a lateral and medial surface. The lateral surface of the tympanic membrane is concave towards the meatus and is directed downwards, forwards, and laterally. The medial surface is convex and bulges into the middle ear. The point of maximum convexity is known as the umbo. When the tympanic membrane is illuminated on inspection, the concavity of the membrane produces a cone of light radiating from the umbo over the anterior inferior quadrant. It receives the attachment of the handle of the malleus up to the center of the membrane. Structure The tympanic membrane is divided into three layers. Outer cuticular layer. It is lined by hairless keratinized squamous epithelium. Intermediate fibrous layer. This consists of an outer radiating and inner circular layer of fibers. The radiating fibers radiate from the handle of the malleus. The circular fibers are present more in the periphery. Inner mucosal layer. It is lined by a single layer of ciliated columnar epithelium. Blood supply. The outer surface is supplied by the deep auricular artery, a branch of the first part of the maxillary artery. The inner surface is supplied by the anterior tympanic artery, a branch of the first part of the maxillary artery, and the posterior tympanic artery, a branch of the stylomastoid artery. Venous drainage. Veins from the outer surface drain into the external jugular vein. Veins from the inner surface drain into the transverse sinus and the pterygoid venous plexus. Nerve supply. The anterior half of the lateral surface is innervated by the auricular temporal nerve. The posterior half of the lateral surface is innervated by the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. The medial surface is innervated by the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve via the tympanic plexus. Development The tympanic membrane develops from the tubotympanic recess, first ectodermal cleft, and the intervening mesoderm. The tubotympanic recess is formed by the union of the first and part of the second pharyngeal pouch. This then opposes the first ectodermal cleft with mesoderm lying in between. Hence, the tympanic membrane consists, from superficial to deep, of three layers and are derived from ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These three layers correspond to the following three layers of the tympanic membrane. Cuticular layer, which is derived from ectoderm. Intermediate layer, which is derived from mesoderm and the mucus layer, which is derived from endoderm. Clinical correlation. Examination of the tympanic membrane. Inspection of the tympanic membrane with an otoscope provides significant information about the condition of the middle ear. The color, curvature, presence of lesions, and position of the malleus are features of significance. When the tympanic membrane is illuminated for examination, a cone of light is reflected in the anterior inferior quadrant of the membrane from the umbo, which marks the attachment of the handle of the malleus. Since the membrane is semi-translucent, 
The following structures lying deep to it are visible. Handle of the malleus, as a yellow streak extending from the umbo upwards and forwards. Lateral process of the malleus, as a white prominence in the upper part of the streak of the handle of the malleus. Long processes of the incus, as white streaks behind and parallel to the upper part of the handle of the malleus. A cone of light at the 5 o'clock position in the anterior inferior quadrant. Clinically, the tympanic membrane is divided into four quadrants by means of two imaginary lines passing through the umbo. One is drawn along the handle of the malleus and the other at a right angle to it through the umbo. Perforation of the tympanic membrane may occur due to an external injury or infection of the middle ear, known as otitis media. Sometimes an incision is given in the tympanic membrane, known as myringotomy, to drain the pus from the middle ear. The incision is usually given in the posterior inferior quadrant to avoid injury to the corda tympani nerve, which crosses the inner aspect of the membrane in its upper part.